Holy cow. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Welcome to another weekend product review. I've been seeing a lot of things on the internet. A lot of people using diesel heating. So I didn't know what that was all about. I've never messed with diesel stuff in my whole life, but I'm a big gas guy. I like working with gas things, right? As you guys know, here on the East Coast of the United States, in the winters, it could get really cold. And for a wrencher like me, that's always in the garage, working on mowers and small engine equipment, my garage can be really, really cold. I have tried electric heaters and kerosene heaters, but uh, they don't really get the job done too well because it's quite a lot of uh, room in there and it takes a while for it to heat up, especially the electric ones. The kerosene ones has a lot of vapors too. And also the kerosene is quite expensive and it burns up in about three hours for a gallon. And a gallon's about $13 here. H Calorie sent me their car parking diesel heater. I don't know what any of that stuff is about. We're gonna find out today. So I've seen these things on the internet a lot. They seem to be very popular recently because apparently you get like a gallon diesel when you put it in here and it'll run forever. It's very fuel efficient. Somebody even said you could probably put biodiesel in here, like uh, French fried oil, you know, uh, oil that you've already used to cook French fries, dirty corn oil. <laughs> I don't know if I want to try that. Got a plate here. Whoa. Think I'm gonna read all that? No way. It's probably in five different languages, but I still probably won't read it. Holy cow. A 10 liter gas tank? It's got some stuff in it. I think that's to uh, help it mix whatever. Oh no. <laughs> it's the hardware. Some washers, some self-tappers, and maybe a petcock, and O-rings. We're gonna have to go out and get some diesel fuel, because like I said, I've never bought diesel fuel in my life. Whoa. Got an LCD display here, with a knob and two buttons. That's also, that also has a key fob here. This is fancier than I thought. Looks like the fuel pump. Here's the unit itself. Carbon fiber design on the top. I don't think it's really carbon fiber. With a pigtail. On the bottom here, inputs and outputs. Ooh boy, <laughs> this video is not gonna take two minutes. Fuel line hose, electrical wiring harness, exhaust or intake vent cap, conduit, intersection, diverter, flex exhaust pipe, flexible air duct, smaller diameter of the same. You got your muffler for your exhaust noise control, decibel level, and a bag full of hose clamps and brackets, studs, nuts, bolts, zip ties, fuel filter. Maybe I should read the instructions. So this is one of the worst review videos I've ever made, if not the worst, okay? Look at this product. I mean, yes, I understand that this is designed to be in your vehicle, like a camper or an RV or something, right? You can't put this in your car. It's designed so that this goes onto the floor of your car or vehicle 
and you're supposed to drill two holes in the frame of your car so that you can have the output of the exhaust pipe to the muffler and a duct so that fresh air goes in one way, the intake, and then the exhaust comes out. Air intake is here also. And here is the worst part of it. This is the gas tank, right? 10 liter gas tank. It has three areas where you can mount them to like a plate, right? has these three holes here. The gas cap and your fuel line, a long fuel line, right? So it also gives you the pet cock where you would attach the fuel line to here. And then fuel would drip into here and get sucked by the Fuel, uh, the fuel pump. Where do you see any holes to put the pet cock in? These three are to mount the gas tank to like a wall or something, right? But where do you put the hole to put the pet cock? How do you get the fuel line into the tank, right? Certainly they don't expect you to drill your own hole and then get a tap and die threader to thread the threads, put the O-ring on here. And then even if you did do that, how would you get this in here to match up with the hole to pull it out? And then how would you grip this to turn the threads to get it in there? I mean, like, if you're not going to give me the product to put together, I'm not going to put it together. <laughs> Especially if we're talking about a diesel heating unit, you know, could be dangerous if you don't install it right. All right. The instructions. <laughs> There's like five languages, right? There's like nine pages per language. Five of the pages are telling you how to pair it to your Bluetooth phone. See, this is Deutsch next. The first nine are English, right? And four or five of the pages are for the Bluetooth pairing, right? And also one page is about the remote control, which is kind of cool. You open the remote control and it has like a positive minus power and all that memory. And it requires a 23A 12 volt battery. How many of you guys have a 23A volt battery? I've never even heard of it. And of course, they don't give it to you. So you have to stop what you're doing, go out and find a 23A battery. So I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> this stuff connected fine to this module, but I mean, look, look at this mess. Who's gonna put this in your car, you nuts? This would be going into fabricating things to put into like a RV or a camper or something like that, which I'm not gonna do, right? Uh, the main instructions here tells you about the internal structure, which we don't really care about, right? And this little, small little diagram, a picture if you will, is the extent of the instructions. That's how you're supposed to put it together, by just looking at that diagram. I have a bag full of stuff that was not used. I know most of this stuff is for the installation and brackets of securing your hoses and your pipes to your RV, right? And then, and then over here, you could use either the duct, you know, for your home or something that goes into another intersection where you can connect other ducts but I would probably take this off if I was gonna use it, which I'm not, and attach this thing to it, you know? This will be more simpler. But I mean, look at this mess. You got these pipes sticking out. You got the fuel line here that if you're not secured to a wall or something, you're gonna kink this line, right? Probably break it, leak diesel fuel everywhere with the heat, cause a fire. If you think I'm gonna ever put this in your car, 
you're nuts. You're just asking for a fire and burn your whole car down. So this amount of gobbledygook is just uh, a complete mess, right? Now they do sell a self-enclosed kind where you don't have to do what I'm doing and you just have something like that and it's an all-in-one gas tanks in it and everything. That thing I would like to review, but they didn't send me that. They sent me something like this, which is ridiculous. Here's the fuse to the harness. Here's the connection pigtail to the unit itself. Here's the electrical uh, connection to the fuel pump connected to an air filter. And of course, the other end connects to your gas tank, which has no outlet for the gas hose. So it's just a self-enclosed gas tank with no outlet unless you did some drilling and tapping and fishing line to pull the petcock to the hole to somehow make it tight enough so it won't leak diesel fuel out so i usually don't say negative things about the products that i get for product review but this one takes the cake this is probably the worst product i've ever seen <laughs> Especially when they give you things that you can't install. Or at least give me instructions on telling me how to install it. The instructions are terrible. The product itself, we don't know if it's good or not because it's too hard to put together. It's impossible to put it together. Especially if you don't give me instructions on how to do it. So yeah, so this uh, diesel heater, air heater for your car... Who is putting this in your car? What are you, crazy? I wouldn't even put this in my RV if I had one. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You guys tell me how to put this petcock into this gas tank. Go ahead. Tell me how. It's impossible. Not impossible, but it would take hours to do. And if you're expecting a regular person with no mechanical skills to put it in, you're crazy. So this H calorie air diesel heater for your car, it's a big fail. I couldn't even get it together because you didn't give me the right tools and parts and instructions on how to put it together. So it's just a bunch of junk to me. I'll leave a link in the description if you want this piece of junk. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Ah, oh, that's a shame. See you guys next time. I'm Moses Blowers.